Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2 from the Team Alpha Christmas Showdown. Bring in South Korea and not Korea together in some epic matches in, in what many would consider the off-season of StarCraft 2. During the holidays, everybody's home playing on their own setups, putting out their best games, maybe. But in the bottom right, my favorite Terran player, the Chess Master, always one step ahead, or at least he seems to be. It's TY. Also known as TYTY, the GSL caster and player. So he's got a he's got a lot of jobs to do, and he does them all so well. And of course, the Canadian Cirque. In the top, left a fan favorite. Some of the best plays and most dramatic defeats. The Queen of Lights from Team Newbie. It is Scarlet. It's a best of three in this particular match. Thank you to Team Alpha for sending me the match, as well as Drickit for putting it on. Scarlet going to be opting for a hash first, and TY, a Reaper expand. So we are playing by the script. Make sure everybody's here. Very important. Everybody gets to see this. Who Nobody wants to miss out on this match, even if it is just for a smaller prize pool. I believe 1500 bucks on the line, 16 players. Pretty cool to put that together still good money especially if you're you're in the comfort of your own gaming chair ty the one of the first players if not the first player who did this he's like if i scout with my scv i don't have to send it home you know the big issue is the reaper doesn't get there by the time they take a third sometimes so in this case well scarlet didn't commit oh the scv punch it up the drone enough for the reaper to knock it down DY finding a way to make sure that third base doesn't happen in dramatic fashion once again. Scarlet Ever, the Creeper. Gonna start at the Creep Strike. Creep spread a little bit harder in this 2020 patch. I think we call it the 2020 patch. The first match is. But guess what? Guess why? The counterattack of Zerglings. I neglected to notice and or mention. That's why. The third base was delayed because four Zerglings slipped by. That is the downside of committing to blocking that third. Was there a, an SCV killed? No, TY pulled it off. He reacted swiftly and decisively, as you might expect. Two very stylistically different players. Uh, Scarlet, I'm, I, I wouldn't say she's imprecise. It's just there's a lot of greed involved. So many times we've watched Scout like, Scout, do you really need 80 drones when they're on two base? And Scout's like, yes, and why would you even fucking ask? Uh, whereas TY gets that fusion core, gets that extra production, gets those extra bases. Now this counterattack doing pretty good. Two SCV kills. Scouts the Hellions, keeps them at home for a little bit. And also killed the Reaper with the Queens. So Scarlet keeping TY busy throughout this. Meanwhile, that's a Roach Worm. Still drone production. Eight more Lings on the way. That Roach Worm might be defensive. Zerg players kind of opting for a handful of Roaches. Well, Battle Cruisers. What Terran isn't a fan of the Battle Cruiser opener? They got a, a slight nerf. More like they're, they're just well-loved. Now, that tactical jump takes a little longer. Their knees hurt. Um, okay, they don't quite remember what they ate for breakfast that morning, but those battle cruisers still a force to be reckoned with and, and really just have to be respected in early games EVT. Small Zergling counterattack. Uh, uh, any roaches popped out yet? No, no roaches. Just 18 things. Just enough to box out. TY keeping a couple Hellions at home, making sure he has the opportunity to wall off. And intercepting with the rest. I would say, like, Scarlet, much like Kerrigan, a very emotional player. Capable of incredible power. But also, that power can backfire. 
Whereas we've called him the chess master before, T.Y. I haven't really seen him make those kind of mistakes in the past. Uh, when he loses, it feels like, like there are mechanically better players. There are players who will build more workers, who will build more units, uh, who might get a step ahead of him. But it's rarely because he got outplayed. I guess you could call that outplayed, but I, I guess strategically outplayed. But tactically outplayed, there are Zerglings in his natural, but at the same time a Battlecruiser jumps into a completely undefended natural. Both sides doing some damage, just superficial so far. The Battlecruiser will be sticking around a while. The Zerglings shut down. Roaches and Ravagers, this has evolved into a pretty large all-in relatively quickly. Corrosive Biles gun down the wall. There's nothing really to defend at home until the next battle cruiser come out. Yeah, the Hellions. But the rapid fire corrosive biles, the wall will go down in two volleys. Orbital force to be lifted. Battle cruiser on the way home, an interesting choice. A lot of players will just keep it around, try to do damage. Not many players just send it home before tactical jump is offline or online or re or cooled down, whatever, what have you. Two battle cruisers finishing up. The question now, how much damage is done? And can TY recover? Battle cruisers, incredibly good units. I've, I've, I mean, it's been exciting, but we've seen this so many times. This was an incredibly well timed. All in out of Scarlet. She took TY by surprise, even though he was scouting actively for it. I think part of it was the creep spread, to be honest. Like, oh, bringing the Battlecruiser back means both of them have a tactical jump. Which is a nice move from TY. But between the creep spread and the commitment to three bases, I don't think TY really expected such an all-in. He's still going to get some damage done. The Hellions have an opportunity. The drones were transferred before. Too much damage could be done there. The Battlecruisers, the flying laser bathtubs raining down Hellfire on the Queen. So far, just superficial damage to Scarlet. Only losing three drowns. Uh, and not even all of those to the Battlecruisers. A Spire is on the way. Until the Spire is done, Battlecruiser is still a, a major threat. There's another Battlecruiser completed back at home. Will T.Y. jump it into the fray? Looks like he's going to repair his cruisers. They don't have half a cru cruiser. Oh my god. When you say cruisers too many times. It starts to be very difficult. SCV repair. Wow, TY really taking his time. Only pulling three SCVs. It feels like this is not one of those games. Yes. You're a measured player, T.Y. Okay. You're measuring... You're taking too long measuring. Scout is at 69 drones. Nice. But... T.Y. does... This is... He did not have the SCVs to recover from this. If he, he came out of it with 30 SCVs, okay, we have a conversation. But this is not go back home, leisurely repair on the cruisers... He's taking too long. Scarlet is going to have too much. This is this is her wheelhouse right now. With as many drones as you could want, literally nine queens ready to defend against the cruisers. Corruptor's about to come out the, the direct counter and really the only solid counter to battle cruisers besides Neural Parasite. Something, something microbial shroud. No! No microbial shroud. The fourth base will be targeted down. The Queen's Brenda and her knitting crew. More like posse at this point. Gonna drive them away. The Corruptor's gonna make haste very important. Yamato is used to trade out a couple. Immediately jumps away. Over to the third before taking any damage. And Hellions are gonna find options. There's, okay. T.Y. is making this look like if T.Y. comes back, I'm going to look really dumb. So T.Y., well, really this is more on Scarlet. Scarlet 
has had quite an opening for, for a while. Yes, her tech was delayed, but are battle cruisers that good that you can just play so casually for several minutes down 20 plus workers and then just eventually win the game? I want to say no. Like, I, well, that's why I said it, but... Scarlet doesn't seem... Well, there is an infestation pit. The hive hasn't started yet. Scarlet is going straight for the roach. Corruptor jackhammer. Bust through everything. There's no... There's not enough tanks on the ground. There's not going to be any cyclones. There's no upgrades. Something like a small depot wall and a couple widow mines, but... Unless this all comes in from the exact same funneled angle. Scarlet's going to be maxing out and TY's looking at 120, 130 supply. 1-1 one, one just now starts. Now, now Scarlet didn't start her upgrades particularly early either. Remember the Roachling Ravager. The Roach is looking for an I don't know, Kev. Well, that is the one place Roaches cannot go directly through that tiny little edge of the depot. That would be the one. We're the Corruptors chase down a battle cruiser. It's going to go down before it can jump or fire the Yamato. Two more jump away, but where is safety is the question. Edge of the third is the choice. Roaches and Ravagers jammed in here. Caustic spray all over the armories. There's no anti-air from the ground. Just a couple Widow Mines. No upgrades for you. They were denied. Oh, the Ravagers are... Okay, this is not ideal. Um, this is... Uh, that's happening. Um, the Ravagers do popped out. Corrosive Biles helping out. This is not a clean fight for Scarlet. Especially on the ground. The Corruptor's doing a great job in the skies. But there's enough. Scarlet rips through and drives the point home. She's going to take game one. It felt like... Thank, thank you, Scarlet, for proving that I was correct on that. Because T.Y. was playing like he had 35 workers when he had 17. Like, you, you can't just lose, like, 50 SCVs and then play like you're even. Not even tearing with mules can do that. So TY may be a little bit too rigid in his response. Game two on Eternal Empire. Oh TY, T come on TY. Oh my god. He's like, well, guess I lost a game. You know what I'm gonna do? Those are two SCVs. Scarlet is going to go for a hatch first. And neither of our overlords are heading this direction. TY's got a build and he's sticking to it. He likes this spot. We've seen him. I saw him do it against Zest. This, this spot right here, tucked into the minerals. I mean, there's not going to be drone scouts. Will there be an OV scout? A lot of players will send their OVs to scout for proxy racks. Scarlet, this is technically scouting by seeing anything coming up this ramp or in this zone. It's passive scouting as opposed to active scouting. Now, the question is, does Scarlet respond correctly? It is two Raxes, not three, not four. There's a very different response to all of them. And if you don't see the actual Rax count and they mask it well enough, the SCVs pop out on the correct side, then you can find yourself in a lot of trouble. All right, the Scarlet cam. Yo, that SCV came in from kind of a weird angle, didn't it? That That's a bunker. <laughs> 
I feel like the bunker kind of gives away the whole game here. Scarlet, no drone pull. It's going to be a Ravager response. Roach one starts. Second bunker. Oh, the high ground. The Overlord is very important to save for as long as possible. The Corrosive Mile Ravager response is uh, a little rare. A lot of players will try to pull those drones early and then kind of... Like, if it doesn't work, you're pretty dead. But at the same time, you're giving up the hatch. The hatch is gone. There's no way you get Ravagers out to save it in time. It's just not going to happen. Scarlet actually going to try to get Creep Tumor here. It feels like... There's almost going to be an attempt made to save this hatchery. Which is... Okay, there's a creep tumor. Just barely out of vision. That creep tumor is going to be very important, both for vision and for the creep. So, these are pretty close to one another. Corrosive Bile helping out a lot. Going to knock down one bunker as one SCV goes down. Second bunker going to be salvaged. Scarlet not budding with the corrosive biles. Working through what's happening back at home. There's already a factory building a cyclone. The worker counts are even. That one SCV is making this take a little too long. TY will get the restocking fee. Well, everything but the restocking fee here. Four Ravagers come across the map. But with a Cyclone, the Marines should be well equipped to deal with this. There are eight Marines, four Ravagers, two Lings, and in a weird... In a weird exchange. But I don't think TY is at any risk of dying right now, especially considering Scarlet is macroing up after this. Down goes an Overlord. Overlord still very precious here. The choice is Lair. Is this for a Nidus? I'm kind of I'm kind of scratching my head. I, okay, I'll literally scratch my head. This is why it's important we have the camera. Okay, as you know. Because otherwise you couldn't see me scratch my head and get excited for the Cyclone dying because of a class like TY. How did you make that mistake? Obviously the Watchtower is a risk. That was super sloppy from TY. And suddenly Scarlet has a whole lot of options. Second Cyclone comes up, but without Marines to buffer, it is at risk. It might it might kill one Ravager, but a Cyclone on its own is super fragile. TY should not have made that mistake. You cannot. That, that was... Losing that Cyclone is the difference between Scarlet kind of running up the drone count and actually getting away with the layer tech and still being forced to... Well, to go... Uh, <laughs> it's an awkward Spire. Now we play... The ultimate poker game. Does she cancel immediately? Or does she actually go for the Spire? Because it's so obvious that Scarlet would cancel the Spire that TY just assumes that the Spire isn't going to happen because the Spire is so obvious. But because he assumes it's not going to happen, not canceling the Spire is actually a better move than canceling the Spire because you've preempted the pre preemptive response. Very important to consider. But that's true. Like, all, all meme games aside, keeping that, like, having that Spire and just having it be a tool in the early game in these super low economies, gonna be great. Even five Mutas, enough to one shot SCVs and Marines, uh, are, are going to be super helpful. I don't mind the choice to just keep the Spire. Like, if you're going down this road, Spire into overwhelming roaches is a deadly combination. Now, the danger is you invest enough in a, in a Spire, in uh, this other tech. At some point, the critical mass of Terran that you can get with, with plus one, plus one, for example, with Stim, with a bunch of Rax production, T.Y. already has three commands. How long has this been here? I have no idea. 
I mean, it's, it's already finished in orbital, so it's not been a short amount of time. Behind this, it looks like Scarlet going to transition into... Is this going to be just straight up mutiling Bane? Okay. And T.Y. is taking the, star, the Spire seriously. He's building some turrets. I like what he's doing. A lot of players don't really protect their buildings with the turrets. They'll put them on the edges and stuff, but he's kind of just making a, a... This is where mutas are most annoying areas. Because mutas are a deterrent. They're not actually a counter. Uh, if the mutas want to kill the turret, usually they will, but you got to make them... You want to make them pay for it. Third base scanned. Gonna see the Road Travager, but sees a Muta popping out as well as some drone. A lot of intel gained here for TY. That Scarlet is one, actually going for the Mutas. Two, working up an economy. Three, maybe going Road Travager. It's not a commitment yet, but it's hard to tell. Now, Scarlet's actually switching in the lane vein, but there's enough Roaches and Ravagers that. It's still a bit ambiguous. Ravager Ling Bane also has devastating burst damage potential. Corrosive Bile and Bane Lings themselves can do a pretty damn good job of just rolling through and knocking down most defenses. TY is still forced to play defense here. Now, despite the fact he's stuck on his side of the map, we need to consider are the upgrades. The closer we get towards 200 supply and the closer the 2-2 upgrades get to completion, and this is really the first chance that Mutalist Caress Scarlet has had, the better it gets for TY. He's going to have a better maxed out army. We're still a long way off from that. We'll see if Scarlet wants to do anything about it before that point. She's got creep approximately half the map. Oh my god. Would you simmer down? Go through three keyboards a month. Infestation pit is on the way. No 2-2 two, two as of yet. This might be a scenario for Ultralisks. A lot of Ravager Ling Bane. If TY gets a scan, I don't think he's really seen the sheer amount that Scarlet's putting on the field. She cut at 70 drones. She's really focusing on units. She wants to jump an army before it gets close to 200 supply. It's getting there. TY at 140, Scarlet 160. More drones now in production. Scarlet has a fourth TY already building his. Plus two, plus two. The tanks, I love how TY, he's always, well, you never know, always sieging his tanks. Spots the army. Bunch of Banes stuck behind the Ravagers. They're just too thick. Corrosive Biles, more to force TY to move rather than actually having an opportunity to kill any of the Marines. Marines stemming it again. Really just poking. He's, he's kind of biding time, keeping the creep busy till 2-2. Two, two. As 2-2 two, two finishes, I think we'll see TY get a bit more aggressive. Ling's looking for a wraparound. Scarlet knows 2-2's two, closing in. I'm sure she's continually checking those upgrades. Click it on the Marines. We're just a couple seconds out. Plus two weapons finishing up. There goes the armor. Wouldn't be surprised if TY starts making some much bigger moves here. He's got the upgrades. He's kept the creep busy. He's stepping forward with groups of Marines. Roach, Ravager, Baneling. The Mutas have been forced to stay defensive almost this entire time. He's going to tuck himself in. Really tempting Scarlet to go. Both sides nearly maxed out. 112 to 100 army supply in favor of the Terran. Scarlet not, not really setting up a flank or anything yet. I guess there are a few from the north here. But, oh, uh, uh, here we go. Units coming in from the top. Marines stimming back. A lot of them stimmed into the Orc. The tank's incredibly well spread. But there are still so many mainlings. They go the wrong path, though. The Ravagers cut down. Beautiful split from TY. He keeps it all together. The main bulk of the Marines 
held the line. That one tank that was sieged up before any of them. That was the, the only one who made it. Scarlet with a good split, but this is just not an army that trades well. One mistake on the Bane Links. And there they go. Well, really, well, you want them to die, but you don't want them to die without hitting Marines. That's the summary. TY gonna clear up creep. He was looking for an opportunity. Is Hive done? Yes, it is. Plus three carapace, as well as adrenal glands on the way. TY always looking to control that creep if possible. Some more tanks coming up. Do they have they have plus one mech weapons? The mainlings are splitting. The Ravagers are exposed. Gets one tank, but there's barely anything left underneath. Scarlet dropping in supply. You don't want to be down in supply against a marine marauder medevac tank army. It's not going to get better from here. Tank sieging up. That one little outpost off a of creep. Oh, big hit with the main link. Scarlet fighting back. One more tank. Tanking out. Wait. Oh, no, it lives. Oh, no. Things like that are, are what you can really... Well, well, they're the symptoms. They're not the problem. There's just not enough. He's tearing through everything. The base is gone. He's stepping on the creep. He's confident. Holding the line. Targeting down Banelings as they get anywhere close. And T.Y. Seems to have this one all beautiful split again. The Ravagers won last bile. But T.Y. takes it home. Ties it up one to one. It's just not an army that'll last you into the late game from Scarlet. It's just not going to do it. You need either to try to find a timing, deny a fourth, or to get up to Hive Tech. But Scarlet didn't really find an opportunity to do either. So we're going into the ace match. Game three. T.Y. Scarlet tied up one to one. This is from the Team Alpha Christmas Showdown. $1,500 prize pool. Shout out to Team Alpha. Check them out. If this is on YouTube, the description, all that. Um, and thank you to Drickit for helping to put especially the non-Korean players uh, and make sure they showed up and got into the lobby. Honestly, the last 10% is 90% of the work. But in the top left is T.Y. Showing why he's so strong when left alone. Well, he wasn't left alone. Okay, let's remember. A well-executed proxy 2 Rex. A macro proxy 2 Rex. When T.Y. does it. In the bottom right, the Canadian Zerk. It's Scarlet. I, I felt like a moment of silence was necessary, or I just zoned out. You take your pick. We're, we're on Simulacrum. Somebody always comments on me saying that every time. It's like Zugliang. Zugla, Jugliang. No, Z, no, see, I brought it up again. Never again. Uh, ZGL. This is S Crumb. There you go. S Crumb. <laughs> Just sounds. Mmm. Delectable. <laughs> this is the. <laughs> doesn't it? Ah. <sighs> Will we see battle cruisers again? I feel like without a proxy two ranks, almost every Terran I've seen have success. Has opened battle cruiser and not lost 50 SCVs to Roach Ravager. So that is an important point. Uh, in, in game number one, TY went battle cruiser, still did well, but did lose 50 SCVs to to Roach Ravager. So. If he can avoid that this time around, I'm already, I'm like, 
I have such a strong feeling he's gonna go battle cruiser. It's not a it's it's starting to get a little bit like PvZ, where I wonder if he's gonna go Stargate again in this matchup. So every once in a while we get a cannon rush to spice it up. And then we go Stargate! <sighs> Oh my god. TY, you greedy devil. What are you, a Twitch cam girl like me, or just a Terran player from 2013? What is this third command center? Oh god. Is this. Are we. a macro game? Scarlet Pump and the Drones with a quick third base. Whereas TY has a third command center in his main hidden with the express intent of remaining so. Where are you going? Oh my god, is he gonna go? Really? As a Zerg player, you gotta, you gotta like, you gotta give them the side eye when they do this with the Overlord because there's not much else to do. It's like. Because you know shenanigans are afoot. When they do this, this late in the game. Mm -mm -mm. Why didn't you just build a Viking, my Terran friend? But how are you gonna know? Why didn't he just build a Viking? Guess what? Doesn't matter. Fusion car. Here we go. Battle cruiser time, everyone. <laughs> The flying laser bathtubs have been refurbished, now with the economy of three command centers. It's going to- wait, nut- there's a- what are you building, a fusion core and then building a banshee? Really? You're that scared of that many S- T.Y. has PTSD, which is, of course, post-traumatic scarlet disorder. Because after that, Roach Allen, Like, this is not a Roach Allen. She just built 20 lings, T.Y. Like, that's not crazy. Two bunkers, a banshee, delaying the battle cruiser. Oh, T.Y. has really gotten into his own head about this one. Oh, my. Gonna scan, see a fully saturated base with a lair on the way. That first all-in, I think, really did a number on him. He was really scared it was happening again. Because he would be super dead. That is true. Scan the Banshee, I mean, has its uses. There's poor crawlers coming out anyways. Denying the creep pretty significantly. The bathtub is, well, the happy ship. It's halfway complete, and we're spiraling up. Two more factories. Oh, Hellions. Nice block on the Queens. Queens are thick enough that they can block uh, a single ramp if they really set their mind to it. You gotta have them perfectly centered. Okay. Don't let them tell you which side's their good side. Brenda's lying to you. Both sides are her good side. That is not a cloak banshee, which means it's not gonna make it home. Oh! Got him. But the battle cruiser in the main distracting me and Scarlet. Only two drone kills. They were transferred real quick. The queen's a little out of position. It's like the overseer. What a say! Yamato Cannon is on the way. That's the indicator. It's going to be a continued battle cruiser composition, obviously. You don't get Yamato Cannon for battle cruisers that don't exist. A fourth base now being taken by Scarlet. I will say that's pretty late, considering TY already slapping down his fourth. Look at the worker count. Scarlet, 69. Not anymore. Not as nice. But TY was 66. And pumping him up. 
all the Hellions. They were spot. This guy was doing a good job spreading overlords, overseers. But is there anything to actually stop the Hellions? A surprisingly slow reaction time despite seeing this. Not losing too much here. Only three workers have been killed, two by the Battlecruiser. So, TY has had every opportunity to build up his macro. He's got three factories now. He's going to want to add more. Like, now is the time. You're at 72 SCVs to 70 drones. He doesn't have the drone count. Neural Parasite is on the way, because everybody knows the best way to counter mech is with mech. Infestors, just because they don't have infested Terrans, doesn't mean they aren't, aren't useful. Far from it. Especially when it comes to Thors and Battlecruisers. There's nothing that really matches them quite like a Thor or Battlecruiser. Metal crew is just, well, first Valley of Yamato, you can't actually jump while being fungal, but they don't take damage very quickly. Are there enough fungals to prevent the jumps? There's, okay, one battle cruiser goes down. The other one will escape. I'll have to tell its friends what happened on the other side of the map. Oh, there was, it was all over. They slimed me like like I was on Nickelodeon. Back on Earth. Wait, do we have that here? I don't know. Oh, it was terrible. And Ricky. Ricky didn't make it. Alright. Swarm Hose Nidus. It begins. The locusts start dropping. TY is not maxed out. One one's still a long way off. But I'm noticing he gets his armories pretty late. Uh, with the with his mech style. Not really focused on upgrades, really trying to pump out the units in time, and can you blame him? Gonna knock down one Nidus, but more pop up where it came from. Another round of swarm husks. There are fourteen on the field, only four infestors. Not really leaning into him at all. Spire and Hive. Now, because of all this tech, the Hive was pretty delayed. Queens and Banes. That's kind of a weird combination. Queens, Roaches, and Banes. I, I like had to register what I was seeing. Another round of Swarm Hosts coming in. Nidus knocked down. I think a Yamato got it. Without... The Corruptors? It's actually pretty tough. This time the Swarm Host's not going to make it. But there's another Nidus. And there's a Burrowed Lang. And there's so much going on. Things are getting closer and closer. Scarlet looking for an opportunity with her Infestors. I don't know if she's going to find one. DY getting caught those tech. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, picks them up. Wait, there's a, there's a Medivac? Okay. I guess that's one way to do it. The scan spots the Infestors. Not even intentionally, it seems. Oh, the tanks going to work. Another Nidus knocked down before it can pop up, but they're they're propping up all over the place. Greater Spire is on the way. TY is maxed out now. If he can survive a strong locust wave, but a fungal wrecks a lot of those aliens. Meanwhile, the battle cruisers jump in. Scarlet gonna lose nine drones and forced to pull the rest. Hellbats working through. Assimilation successful. No, the battle cruisers were stolen and jumped back in. Ty gonna be losing two cruisers. Well, actually, yeah, you get like you can't take that for granted. Well, you, uh, the tactical jump is on cooldown, but Hellbat drops in in TVZ. This is definitely new. This is Ty's innovative counter to the swarm host. But guess what? The tanks are in front. He actually, the Hellbats weren't in the medevacs, which seems. Kind of like a big oversight here. Tutu's on the way. So most of the Hellbats and tanks die. The idea was good, but the execution could have used a lot of work. Oh, the Hellbats. Oh, just don't, uh, 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 uh. 
Titanic lifeboat. Or just the Titanic, really, with those Hellbats. Water not good for Hellbats. Fun fact. All the tanks. Caught. Hellbats not in front. Around a Locust. The Zerg are coming! The tanks are able to siege, but... Well, with the Locust on the ground, it's alright. Corruptors to knock things out of the sky. The battlecruisers have already been dealt with. Scarlet battering TY, but somehow he still has a fourth and a fifth base, despite all of that. And 90 SCVs, because that's how TY do. Is there any way this base survives, though? Five corruptors with uh, some caustic spray, if you know what I'm talking Spray and pray. That base isn't going to make it. The Hellions working on top. A round of locusts is on the way. Gonna pull back. Three tanks pretty exposed. TY scrambling. It does feel like TY is just trying to put out fires left and right, despite being the one with Hellbats. Scarlet has a solid five bases as well. And a more modest 74 drones. Oh no, the Broodlords. But just in time, the Thors are here. Thors, a great counter to Broodlords nowadays. Those Broodlords, uh, a little bit more old and... And, and not able to throw their broodlings as far. Not, a, not like they were back in the day. If Coach just put them in in the, in the fourth quarter of that Chinese team league, then they could have showed them. They could have showed everybody why they deserve... Oh, wait, they did. And then they won. Happy ending. The broodlords are coming. Where are the Thors? Oh, wait, what? TY is addicted to just dropping things everywhere. So he drags out the swarm host locust. He negates them, but is there time? High impact mode used. The uh, the, the brood lord death ball. There's investors underneath. Queens off a of creek. Roaches, ravagers, banelings. The brood lord count is is still intact. Only six of them. Neural parasite take it out immediately. Corrosive bile. All all over the thors. Almost nothing. There's not any anti air to deal with this. The thors trying to pound into the broods. But there's not much HP between them. He tries to pick them up, but they've already been knocked down. Another Thor comes up, but TY just can't stop the bleeding. He's lost so much. He's still got 80 workers, but he's got next to no army. Another Thor comes up. Marines come out of the bunker. He salvages the bunker out of reflex. He's trying to drop back the Thors. Doing a back-to-back -back action movie style. But at the end of the day... It's gonna be two G's from TY. Scarlet is too much from all sides. Between the swarm hosts, the brood lords, the ravagers, the mainlings, and all the other units who don't get credited because they didn't have speaking roles. Scarlet takes it two to one over the Korean Terran. Thank you to Team Alpha. Check them out on Afrika TV, and if this is on YouTube, like, I mean, it's Scarlet versus TY, why did you click on it? That's why. Check the description, which you unlock by clicking like and subscribe. Twitter.com slash Alpha... Al team, team Alpha? Is it Team? It's Alpha... Alpha XSC2. Yes, I first try every time. Got it. Uh, make sure to check them out. And thank you to Drickit for bringing it together. If you enjoyed, is, is Zerg fair? Should TY always be able to beat Scarlet? Did Scarlet have an amazing day? Either way, some great games. And thank you to Drickit for putting it all together. Good luck, and have fun.